Today's Zwift tip isn't a Swift tip because this one's going to take a few minutes to go through. And what it's all about is the revamped web dashboard for Zwift. The web dashboard was originally for user account management only, but over the years it's been extended a little bit more and today a little bit more again. So it was formerly my.zwift.com. Now to get to the web dashboard, you simply go to zwift.com and log in with your Zwift account and up it comes. From there, you can manage your user details, your account details, the billing details, your connections to other services such as Strava, Training Peaks, or other third-party sites. You can check your email preferences and you can also look at your activity feed. And that's the main part that's been updated today. Jumping straight into what it all looks like here and up on the screen I have my dashboard that I've logged into and you can see there the activity feed is what comes up by default. And well first the, this part here which is my overall rider summary. So I'm level 50, I've ridden just under 29,000 kilometers on Zwift, 38 days non-stop riding, elevation calories and some running stats there as well and more importantly the drops. So on the activity feed I can go all favorites or just me, very similar to what we see in the companion app. So scrolling down uh, my people that I follow are listed here. So Peter Chilcott did the SZR Sunrise Ride which is a group ride. King Lou, the owner of Giant Bicycles, who I follow, is there. Let's give King Lou a thumbs up on that one. Good stuff. Lewis Dinsdale was there. Let's give Lewis a thumbs up on that. Okay, and you can give people... Oh, here we go. Uh, lead Out Simulation. Todd Cockshut, we give you a thumbs up on that. Todd, let's have a look at what the Lead Out Simulation is all about. So, very much like Strava, where you can click on other people's user profiles and see what they've been up to. So, Todd, let's have a look at what you've been up to here. And you can see that animation load there. Of what Todd was up to. 17.3 K is just under the hour elevation calories achievements. Todd finished the event and finished the workout. Good stuff. Did I give a thumbs up? I did indeed. I did now. And screenshots from there. Waiting for that to load and there we go. So from there you can download the image file from somebody else. Your own ride as well if you want. <laughs> uh, back to activity feed. Let's go to just me and have a look at what's going on here for a ride that I can analyze on myself rather than snoop around other people's data. So last night I participated in the HDR PB Giant presented by Giant Ride. Um, group ride, date there. Click on this and have a look at what's going on. You'll see the same animation load up as we saw before. Okay. A few thumbs up for that ride and there's our three laps of London flat through there with the animation. Cool. Okay, now that's loaded. I can go into all the details. So I've now got access to configure that as public followers or private. I can download the fit file if I want to analyze that with another service or do something to the fit file. I'll hit close on that or rename the ride from there. Summary is there, my achievements, nearby Zwifters and a screenshot. If I didn't manage to capture a screenshot, Zwift will save one automatically in there that I can download. And that looks like a higher res version than what's supplied in the companion app. So happy days there. But that's not it. If we scroll down just a little bit, we get some full analysis. And this is pretty cool. This is very similar to what you get in the companion app again, but now on the web. So from here we have power, speed, heart rate and cadence. There's the ride there. So pretty chilled ride. Less chilled when I had a few dropouts. I had to chase back on. We can toggle those on or off, just like in the companion app. So if I wanted to see my dropouts, there's my heart rate dropouts through there. That was a USB cable issue or something there because it was dropping heart and trainer and everything else at the same time. So there we are. Scrolling down, power distribution, heart rate distribution, and the event info is also available from there. So duration, total Zwifters, categories we're in, and if anybody's left a note, and I've left myself just a note on there. So there's an overview of the updated web dashboard for Zwift users. Now I think this is a step in the right direction for Zwift, bringing that uh, detailed analysis to the web, but I think there's a missing piece to the puzzle. That being user fitness, performance, or load tracking over time. At the moment, we've got to go to Strava or Training Peaks or Today's Plan to have a look at how our fitness is tracking over time. I think Swift are only one step away from collating all the data that they've already got of our rides and giving us a performance graph. Being able to track this within Zwift, see where you've been in the past and where your fitness is heading would be awesome. Now to see where your fitness is heading is going to require something else and that's the calendaring function. So you can schedule things in the future, maybe dragging and dropping workouts or maybe even selecting a training plan, having that populate and knowing where your fitness is going to be. That would be pretty cool. That kind of functionality would then lessen the reliance on other third party services such as, well, Strava to an extent, definitely training peaks and things like today's plan. Bringing that all in house under one umbrella with calendaring, 
fitness and performance or load tracking, that would be absolutely brilliant and I hope to see Zwift head that way soon. Now I'm just spitballing and I'm well off topic. This was all about the updated dashboard. Let me know below what you think and where Zwift should go with your user data. I think there's a lot to be done there. All right, let me know your thoughts below and thanks for watching.